The topic of this lecture will be selectivity in free radical halogenation reactions. Before we start, though, we need to discuss an important concept about how we differentiate carbons in a molecule. We can differentiate carbons based on the number of carbons they're bound to. Let's look at an example. There are three types of carbons in this molecule. Let's look at the Lewis structure as well. This molecule has three primary carbons. Primary carbons are carbons that are bound to only a single additional carbon atom. This molecule also has a secondary carbon. The secondary carbon is a carbon that is bound to two other carbon atoms. This mo molecule also has a tertiary carbon atom. A tertiary carbon atom is a carbon that is bound to three other carbon atoms. Now that we've discussed how to differentiate between the different carbon atoms in a molecule, let's look at an example of a free radical oxygenation reaction. We will start with free radical chlorination of propane. Up to this point, when we've discussed free radical chlorination, we've talked about the free radical chlorination of methane or ethane. In propane, things change because there are two different types of carbons where substitution can occur. In propane, substitution can occur at a primary carbon or a secondary carbon. Chlorination at one of these two positions will give us two different products. Chlorination at the primary position will give us one chloropropane. Chlorination at the secondary carbon will give us two chloropropane. This is a substitution reaction where we're replacing hydrogen with chlorine. So based on random chance, we would expect there to be 75% of the one chloropropane and 25% of the two chloropropane, purely because there are six primary hydrogens that can be replaced and only two secondary hydrogens that can be replaced. However, when we run this reaction in the lab, the actual ratio we get is 60% of the two chloropropane and only 40% of the one chloropropane. In order to understand the actual product ratio that we get, we have to understand the mechanism of this reaction because the product ratios have to deal with the relative energies of the transition state and the intermediates involved in the formation of each product. So let's look at this reaction in more detail to see if we can understand the actual product ratios observed. The determination of which product is formed occurs in the propagation steps. The initiation and the termination steps for the formation of one chloropropane and two chloropropane are the same. So we're just going to look at the propagation steps. In the first propagation step, a hydrogen atom is abstracted from propane. This can occur at either a primary or a secondary carbon. If a primary hydrogen is abstracted, we get a primary radical. If a secondary hydrogen is abstracted, we get a secondary radical. It is the second propagation step where we form the chlorinated product. The primary radical forms one chloropropane, and the secondary radical forms two chloropropane. Therefore, it is the first propagation step where determination of the product occurs. Therefore, we need to look at the energetics of this first propagation step to understand why the secondary radical is formed in abundance compared to the primary radical, therefore resulting in a higher amount of 2-chloropropane in the products. In order to look at these energy differences, let's draw a reaction coordinate diagram. Because we're looking at the first propagation step, the reactants are the same for the primary or the secondary radical, meaning that the reactants are at the same energy. It's the products of this step, the radicals, that differ in energy. We can actually calculate delta H for this reaction using the bonds that are broken and the bonds that are formed. If we do so, we see that both of these steps to form the primary and the secondary radical are exothermic, but the step to form the secondary radical is more exothermic products of this step are lower in energy than the products of the primary radical formation. Because the structure of the transition states are between the structure of the product and the reactant, the energies of the transition states will be affected by the difference in the energies of the products. The transition state to form the primary radical will be higher in energy than the transition state to form the secondary radical. It is this difference in activation energies that is responsible for the difference in the rates of formation of the primary and secondary radicals, and it is responsible for the formation of the secondary radical in abundance and the formation of 2-chloropropane as the major product of this reaction.
Because the activation energy for the secondary radical is lower, it is formed more quickly. Why is the secondary radical more stable than the primary radical? In general, the trend for the stability of radicals is that a more substituted radical is a more stable radical. In practice, what this means is that a methyl radical is the least stable radical. If we replace one of those hydrogens with a carbon to make the primary radical, it becomes more stable. A secondary radical with two of the hydrogens replaced with carbons is even more stable. The most stable radical will be tertiary. The reason for this trend in stability is the inductive effect. Remember that radicals are electron deficient species. Because carbon has electrons to share while hydrogen doesn't, the carbons stabilize the electron deficient radical center. So as we replace hydrogens with carbons around the radical center, the radical becomes more stable due to the inductive effect. Now that we understand the stability of radicals, let's look at an algination example. This time, we will consider the bromination of propane. Again, since propane has primary and secondary carbons, we get two products. We get one bromopropane and two bromopropane. Again, without understanding the mechanism of this reaction, you might expect a 3 to 1 ratio of these products. However, the actual ratio that we see is 3% of the one bromopropane and 97% of the 2-bromopropane. Because the ratio of the 2-bromopropane to the 1-bromopropane is higher than we saw in chlorination, we say that the bromination reaction is more selective. Again, it is the first step of propagation, the rate-determining step, that determines the ratio of the products. This step is exothermic in the chlorination reaction, but endothermic in the bromination reaction. This is due to the strength of the hydrogen-halogen bond that is formed as a product. Now let's compare the reaction coordinate diagrams for the reactions, bromination and chlorination. We've already looked at the reaction coordinate diagram for the free radical chlorination of propane, and it looks like this. Now let's look at the free radical bromination of propane. The reactants for the free radical bromination of propane are the same whether we're forming the primary or the secondary radical. The difference comes in the products. This reaction is endothermic, meaning the products will be higher in energy than the reactants. This difference in energy, delta delta H, will be the same difference in energy we saw in the chlorination reaction. Because the difference in energy is due to the same thing, the difference in the energy between the primary and the secondary radicals. The difference in selectivity and bromination comes from the fact that the transition state and energy differences are not the same as chlorination. The difference in the activation energies for the bromination reaction is larger than the difference in the activation energies for the chlorination reaction. Because the difference in activation energies for the bromination reaction is larger, that means that the secondary radical is formed more quickly in the bromination reaction and we get more of it and more of the 2-bromopropane product. The reasoning for this difference in activation energies is explained by the Hammond postulate. The Hammond postulate states that related species that are closer in energy to one another are also closer in structure to one another. What that means for our examples is that the structure of the transition state in each reaction, the chlorination or the bromination, will most closely resemble the structure that is most close in energy to the energy of the transition state. Let's look at some illustrations of the Hammond postulate with respect to chlorination and bromination of propane. Remember that the transition state that we're interested in is the transition state of the first propagation step. Remember that is the carbon-hydrogen bond that is breaking and the hydrogen halide bond that is forming. So our transition state will look something in between where the carbon-hydrogen carbon bond is breaking and the hydrogen halide bond is forming. We can get a better idea of what that transition state looks like by determining which species, the reactants or the products, is closer in energy to the energy of the transition state, and that differs between chlorination and bromination. Let's look at those reaction coordinate diagrams again. Chlorination is exothermic. In an exothermic reaction, the structure and energy of the transition state is closer to the structure and energy of the reactants.
because the reactants are closer in energy to the transition state than are the products. In bromination, the reverse is true. Bromination is an endothermic step. In an endothermic reaction, the energy of the transition state is closer in energy to the energy of the products. Because the transition state energy is closer to the energy of the products than it is to the reactants, the transition state in an endothermic reaction will look more like products. What does that mean for the transition states? In chlorination, the transition state will look more like the reactants, where the CH bond has barely broken and the HCl bond has barely formed. We will see the reverse in the bromination transition state. Because the transition state in the bromination step is closer in energy to the energy of the products, we see that in its transition state structure, the carbon-hydrogen bond is almost completely broken and the hydrogen-bromine bond is almost completely formed. Now that we understand the Hammond postulate, let's go back and look at our reaction coordinate diagrams for the complete propagation step again. In chlorination, which is an exothermic process, the energy of the transition state is closer in energy to the products, to the reactants. Therefore, because the reactants have the same energy for the primary and secondary radicals, the transition states will be very close in energy. For bromination, the transition states most closely resemble the products. The products are different in energy for the primary and secondary pathways, meaning that there will be a very large difference in the energies of the transition states, leading to a much larger delta activation energy for the bromination reaction, and leading to a much more selective reaction.